Hello, I'm Corey Harden, Deputy Editor of NEJM Evidence, and this is Stats Stat. You are studying for your board exams and have created flashcards to help. On one side, you have a prompt. On the flip side, the answer. You test your knowledge. Adrenal insufficiency is ruled in with blank. The answer just doesn't come to you. You take a guess, flip over the card, and see you guessed wrong. But you keep at it, and over time, you answer more and more questions correctly. You can almost feel your neurons growing. Believe it or not, a similar guess the right answer process underlies the success of new artificial intelligence large language models, such as BARD and ChatGPT. Headlines have proclaimed that these fancy models can even pass medical board exams. Will these types of computer programs make the job of a clinician obsolete? Before surrendering your stethoscope, let's talk about how these programs actually work. While you used lecture notes and a textbook or two to create your flashcards, large language models draw on information from millions of articles, websites, and textbooks, information collectively referred to as a corpus. Still, the analytic approach is kind of like the one you used with your flashcards. It starts by guessing an answer at random. Adrenal insufficiency is ruled in with an octopus. It searches its corpus and assigns a probability, indicating how often the word octopus, or other possible answers, followed the given prompt. At first, such a model doesn't work well at all, but it learns by comparing its initial answers with its corpus. Soon, it reliably selects from the corpus the word that has the highest probability of coming next. So if the corpus contained many occurrences of the sentence, adrenal insufficiency is ruled in with an ACTH stimulation test, then it will respond with an ACTH stimulation test to the prompt, adrenal insufficiency is ruled in with blank. Large language models are essentially a set of conditional probabilities of a given word occurring in a sentence given all the other words around it. The word octopus, for example, would get a score linking it to the other words with which it's typically associated maybe ocean, smart, ate, or grilled. Of course, there's more to it than that. These models involve a computational technique called a neural network and are refined through reinforcement learning. Let's look at these two concepts in more detail. First, the neural network. To conceptualize neural networks, consider the structure of a neuron with an input layer, think dendrites, hidden layers, think cell body and nucleus, and an output layer, think axon terminals. Let's start with a simple single layer network. The input layer sends information to the hidden layer, which weights all the inputs and implements a rule that assigns a given output. The simple model can be very much like established statistical techniques that predict a dependent variable, the word you are trying to predict, based on a linear weighting of a set of independent variables, the words around it. More complex neural networks can have many hidden layers. Large language models rely on a sophisticated form of neural network known as a transformer model. Transformer models are particularly good at addressing the fact that the probability of a given word occurring may be dependent on words that are very far away in the sentence or even in a previous sentence. The second concept is reinforcement learning. Here, the goal is to preferentially reward certain actions by the model. Responses are evaluated, often by a human reviewer initially, on different metrics and are given scores for example, an accuracy score or a profanity score. If the reviewer gives a good score for a given prompt, the model prioritizes similar responses. This allows for fine-tuning of the model output and steering of the model away from generating responses deemed to be inaccurate or profane. The use of reinforcement learning is a strength of large language models, but also a potential limitation. After all, how do you know if reviewers are selecting the ideal answers? especially for questions which are beyond their expertise or ones that might not have one single correct response. There are other limitations too. Any model will reflect the bias of its inputs. For example, most models have been trained using data from the internet where content from high-income countries is overrepresented. Another limitation is that these models can generate answers that are articulate and confident and wrong. And so far, they tend to underperform with highly specialized knowledge such as complex clinical questions. As you ponder all of this, you might start to wish that you could take your exam using a large language model. After all, it seems like we're going to be utilizing these more and more in our clinical practice. But even if clinicians do employ more AI-based tools in the future, 
patients will still count on somebody who understands medicine and not just the language of medicine. So for now, back to the flashcards. <laughs> 